Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Now, in this episode, we're delving into the upcoming election of a third vice president of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. The FCM, as many of you will know, serves as the national voice for municipal governance, advocating for policies and initiatives that address the diverse needs of communities from coast to coast to coast. And with the annual FCM conference just around the corner, all eyes are on the bustling city of Calgary, where municipal leaders will converge to tackle pressing issues and chart the course for Canada's local governance landscape. But amidst the workshops, panels, and networking sessions, one pivotal event looms large, the election of the FCM's new board of directors and table officers. And among the esteemed candidates vying for the third vice presidency is none other than Mike Yargo, mayor of the town of Penhold, Alberta. Now, in this episode, we sit down with Mayor Yargo to discuss his candidacy, his priorities for FCM, and his vision for advancing municipal interests on the national stage. So join us as we explore the intersection of local governance and national advocacy and delve into the crucial role of the FCM in shaping the future of Canadian communities. So grab your headphones and get ready to dive deep into the world of municipal advocacy. This is municipal affairs. Mayor Yargo, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. You have decided to put your name forward for the third vice presidency as the table officer for the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. I want to just get this right off the bat. What made you decide that you would be best served as a table officer on FCM as the third vice president? Thank you, Chris. And thanks for, thanks for doing this. Um, you know, I guess I've been involved with FCM for over three years now, I've sort of came, uh, I don't want to say fell in love, but I've came to really value the organization and and see the good work that we can do when we work together with, with local municipal elected officials all across Canada. Um, it's become something I'm really passionate about. So, you know, looking, going back well, about a year ago now, when you start to think about this opportunity coming up and talking to, to people around Alberta and people around Canada about, um, this year would be the the prairies and territories turn, I guess, to to elect a table officer for third VP. Um, you know, I had a lot of support from people around the country, and it's something that I I am really looking forward, really excited to to do. So I decided. Uh, well, I'll talk to my wife also because um, so any any time you step in, into to a, a role like this or attempt to, you need a strong support system at home. Um, so once she she was comfortable with it, I decided, okay, let's do it, and here we are. So the Federation of Canadian Municipalities advocates for issues that municipalities are facing from coast to coast to coast. And that's from British Columbia to St. John's, from Windsor all the way up to Dawson or Tuktoyaktuk, Northwest Territories. How does the mayor of Penhold, Alberta, expect to bring unique voices to the table and address the myriad of issues that municipalities face as a small town mayor from Alberta? You know, I think I think such a large part of it is is relationship building and understanding the issues that that every municipality has. So so some of that comes from, um, you know, I've learned just talking to people around the table that yeah, Penhold's about four thousand people, um, but a lot of our issues are the exact same as as the city of Montreal. Say. Um, and I use that as an example because my very first FCM, I sat and had breakfast with a couple councillors from Montreal, and we we talked about garbage collection at the time. Uh, we were you know. Both, both communities were at the time struggling with uh, implementing a new garbage collection system. Um, so, so I think that gives, you know, when you, when you come at, at work like this with that understanding that, yeah, we, we might not all be the same, but we have a lot of the same, same issues. Um, it really helps you when you want to work together and, and get things done. And what are the challenges you're hearing? Because uh, I'm assuming this this uh, election didn't just spring up overnight. You said you started having this conversation with yourself and your wife last year. What are the issues that you're hearing from the different jurisdictions, the different provinces and the different territories? You say they're similar to Penhold, but what exactly are the issues that you're hearing about? Well, the, the biggest one right now is absolutely infrastructure funding. Um, I think it's something like, over over one million new new people moved to Canada last year. They're moving to our cities and our towns and our counties, and um, you know it's stretching our our wastewater, it's stretching our water systems, it's stretching our roads, it's stretching ev everything, right? And the funding for infrastructure in Canada has plummeted. Um, the the federal and, and provincial governments just aren't stepping up 
to accommodate all this this new growth that we're having. So, you know, coast to coast to coast, we're we're talking about municipalities that are struggling to keep up with the growth um, and 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 welcome new residents. Some some can't grow anymore because they just don't have the capacity, right? So that, that's definitely the biggest challenge. And what do you see as your role if you are so successful in this election as third vice president in being in helping address those issues? Is there a unique perspective that you're going to bring to the table that I'm not saying that the other candidates who, as of right now, you're the only one listed on the FCM website as running for this position. There are uh, confirmed that there are people other than yourself running. But is there a way that you will be able to advocate a little bit differently on infrastructure funding around funding? at the sort of national level for yourself? So one thing I think I'm good at anyway um, is, is relationship building. And I think that's really key when it, when it comes to working with the federal government. Um, FCM as a group has a tremendous amount of power and, and we need to leverage that power and, and build those relationships with uh, the federal government, uh, whoever it is at the time, um, to ensure that they're, they're understanding what our problems are and, and what they can do to assist us. And do you see yourself being able to have done that prior to being on uh, being a potential table officer in your role as Penhold mayor, being able to work with the provincial government? Because in your time as a mayor, you have seen a changeover in the provincial government. Mm -hmm. So you you might be getting on as third vice president. There might be an election. There might be a new federal government, new federal party taking the lead as the federal government. So you'd be able to work with across party lines. You know, absolutely. Uh, and that's something I pride myself on being able to do. I wouldn't say, you know, before I got involved in, in local politics, I definitely would have been uh, much more of a partisan politician, I guess I would say. And and being involved in local politics, going through different government changes as well, um, and also working with, with neighboring councils, it's really, really shown me the need to sort of put partisanship aside at the end of the day. Um, you know, politics is politics. There is a time and place for partisanship, but when we're talking about getting things done and, and building communities, you got to put that aside and just work with whoever's there and understand that, you know, for the most part, everyone involved in, in levels of government, whether it's municipal, provincial or federal, are all here, you know, for the right reasons. They all, they all want to make their communities better. They all want to make the country better. Um, we just got to come at it with that understanding and then get down, get down to business. What's the first step, in your opinion, what is the first step that FCM needs to take to address some of these challenges? Because you're going to be sitting alongside the second vice president, the first vice president, and the president, yeah. past president, but also the board of directors. In your opinion, what do you see as the first step that is needed to address some of these challenges, of work, especially around? Because relationship building is great, and I think everyone would say that's probably the first priority. But for you, is there a first step that you're hoping that the federal government will address? Well, for, from the FCM standpoint, I think we have to be vocal, very vocal. And, and I think over the last couple of months, FCM has done a really good job um, releasing some marketing campaigns uh, on social media and some some toolkits for municipalities to work with. Um, but I think as a, you know, when you're when you're an organization like this, I always say you've got a certain amount of political capital. And there's certain times where you want to make sure you're spending that political capital. Uh, and for me, where we are in the country right now, um, you know, this is an important time for for FCM to step up and start spending that political capital that we have and, and making sure that the government is aware that we're here and we're we're not going anywhere until until we get get, you know, get some improvement in how we fund ourselves or fund municipalities. I just want to make sure I clarify this, but you're not saying that FCM hasn't done that right now, but no, you're no, saying no. that you're you just want to be able to use that yeah. political capital uh, after yeah. you get elected. No, I, I, I think. Yeah, I think they've done a really good job, especially lately. Um, but I think, you know, it's something you got to keep the foot on the gas and keep driving this home, how important, you know, infrastructure spending for municipalities is. I think that needs to be our main focus, and we need to really drive that home. Over the last few weeks, I've been on the road. I was just recently in Manitoba at the Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference in uh, Brandon. I was at SUMA in Regina. I'm heading up to Dawson City for the Association of Yukon Communities. And I'm hearing a myriad, like I said, of different issues. And funding is one of them. But there's also unique challenges that a lot of municipalities are facing, whether it be rural crime, health care, infrastructure, as we've talked about Um these are traditionally in the provincial and federal jurisdictions. How do you see FCM advocating for municipal issues while 
understanding that some of the municipal issues you're advocating for are in those federal and provincial jurisdictions. So we're in an interesting time right now all across the country where provinces and, and the federal government are sort of, you know, getting in a bit of a fight over who whose jurisdiction is what and who gets to do what. Um, you know, I, I think that's where municipalities can can build that bridge and start start bringing those groups together. Like I say, we've got to there, there's a time and a place for partnership. But at this point, we've got to put that put that on the back burner and just get to work at the end of the day, you know, the the town of Penhold doesn't care where our infrastructure funding comes from. Let's see if it comes from the federal government or the provincial government, or if it goes from the feds to the province to us. Um, we need it, right? Uh, so as as local leaders who are created by the province, it's a good opportunity for us to sort of bridge that gap between the province and the federal government, and hopefully um, improve some relationships. The Federation of Canadian Municipalities, the bilingual organization, the mayor of Penhold, Alberta, is traditionally a more Anglophone community. Have you been working on your bilingualism here over the last few weeks to make sure that uh, when you are elected, if you are elected, you would be able to represent the needs of people in downtown Montreal or even here in Alberta, up in Legal or up in St. Isidore, who are more Francophone communities? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've been working uh, working on my French daily. I've taken some lessons through the Red Deer Francophone Society. Uh, I've uh, through you know throughout through FCM, I've met some incredible French speaking people uh, from from all over Canada actually that that are helping me as well. And I try to uh, I would say I, I I'm a good listener. Uh, I, I do struggle with um, keeping up in conversation and 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 coming up with the right words to say. But um, j'écoute bien. <laughs> awesome. Um, I want to turn to somewhat of a balancing act that you would have to do if you are elected to this position. You are the mayor of a community that is bursting right now. A lot of development, a lot of things going on in your community. FCM takes you away a lot of the time because you're going to conferences, you're going to Ottawa to advocate on municipal issues. Um, I'm assuming you have the backing of your council, but do you have the backing of your residents where you'll be able to balance the needs of your community with the needs of all the diverse municipalities across uh, Canada? So, and I, you know, that's a great question. I, I, one of the other things you, you need to have is the support of your council to do this. Um, so I, uh, I, me, me and my council have talked uh, a lot about this and it's something that uh, I'm very happy and very fortunate to have such a strong council team and to have their support um, for residents. You know, every, when I talk to residents, they're on board, obviously um, there, there will be a, a, a large commitment, especially the, the presidency year. Uh, and I, I believe I have the community behind me um you know we have, we're going through an election before that year comes up too so uh i'll find out for sure then but um no we have a great community in penhold they are really supportive of of our whole group um I, I you know i think i think we're doing a good job representing the town uh we get that feedback from residents so uh i'm i'm confident that i've i've got the support from from both my council and my residents because you mentioned it, so I'm going to play in the sandbox a little bit, if you don't mind, because this is not just a one-year commitment. This is a uh, commitment yeah. for over almost four years. So you're you're kind yeah. of showing your hand a little bit here by saying you're running for re-election in 2025 already. <laughs> but I... Four years ago, the issues that we were dealing with at a municipal level were not the issues that we're dealing with today. While they're probably somewhat the same, housing has become a big issue. Infrastructure has become a big issue. Four years from now, it's going to be completely different. Uh, it could be different. It could be uh, it could be the exact same. I, I don't want to use my magic hat here, but I'm assuming it's going to change. How do you see yourself in adapting to the ever-pressing challenges with sort of a four-year commitment? Because... Four years is a long time to commit to something, no matter what you are, and that's what municipal government's all about, is committing to a four-year period. Do you see yourself being able to adapt to the ever-changing challenges that municipalities will face over those four years' time? Yeah, I mean, municipal politics is, especially municipal politics, is something that you you have to have to be an open book on, and you have to be prepared to to adapt. Um, like you say, the, the challenges we had four years ago aren't the same as the challenges we had today. Um, 
so that that's I, I, you know that's a strength of mine I think and something I've learned through my time as a counselor and and as the mayor is to be able to adapt and to be able to to respond to new issues and and work at them um, so it's something I'm, I'm I'm ready to do. You'd be uh, working alongside rural and urban communities, large and small communities as well. Uh, you have made those connections. Uh, I was at AMM and I was at SUMA and your name came up a few times during those conversations that I was having. Um, while elections are happening, Saskatchewan's heading to an election, Nova Scotia's heading to an election, uh, Yukon, like I said, I'll be up there in yeah. a few weeks, they're heading to an election this year as well. Um, there's going to be a unique challenge addressing uh, municipalities right now about getting people involved at the end of the day. Do you see FCM and playing a role in advocating for people getting on the ballot and actually working in municipal governments? Because when you speak, when I speak to municipal leaders, it doesn't seem like municipal governance is where people are putting their eggs right now and they're more focused on mm -hmm. provincial and federal. Why is municipal governance, in your opinion, such an important level of democracy in this country? Well, municipal governments are the, the heart of the community at the end of the day. Um, you know, most, most things people are passionate about in their day-to-day -day life when they talk about um, about about government, our our municipal issues, right? Uh, they're you know they're concerned about property taxes. They're concerned about you know garbage collection. They're concerned about the quality of water. They're concerned, you know, those, all these things are, are municipal issues. Um, there is a lack of understanding, definitely. You know, not everyone is is, is politically involved as you or I. Uh, uh, so that that's always a challenge. And then, you know, especially in small communities, but these are tough tough jobs to do because they're not they're not full-time jobs they're not full-time paying jobs um but there are times where they are full-time jobs there there's there's portions of my year where you know my i have weeks dedicated to just being the mayor of penfold right um so it's challenging to get people to step up to that role it's challenging to get younger people to step up to that role because um I, i'm fortunate in my in my life that i own a, a business that allows me the flexibility to to adapt my schedule when needed, but not everyone has that, right? Um, so it, it's a challenge. It's something I think FCM is also doing some good work with uh, as far as supporting candidates and and combating some of the harassment that local candidates, not, not just local, but any any elected official or, or candidate is receiving lately. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of important work FCM can do there. We can really get ourselves out there, start, uh, and they're, they're doing it even with their Trailblazer series. Um, you know, some of that's more internal uh, amongst the organization, but but we can get out there and talk about, you know, who FCM is and, and who the people representing our, our municipalities are and really shine a light on that because we've got some some fantastic leaders throughout throughout Canada. So what is FCM to Mike Yargo, the mayor of Penhold then? So to me, FCM is a, is a valuable... Um, it's a it's a it's a valuable group of, of of people you can learn from, right? Um, I've learned and I've grown so much through through FCM just by by talking to people from all over the country. Uh, I've I've changed the way I think about certain things. Um, I've helped people change the way they think about certain things. It's it's a sounding board, right? Uh, as you know, being there's a lot of there's a lot of great parts about being the mayor of Penholder, being being the mayor of Councilor, anywhere you are. And there's there's times where it's it's tough and stressful, um, and when when you're within that that group that FCM group, um, it's a bit like a family, right? You can you can go and talk to someone from across the country um, about about some issues you're having, and they can come at it from a totally neutral place and just talk you through it. Um, it's a it's a great it, it's maybe a bit cliche, but it's like a little family, right? We've uh, you can you can grow grow with these people. You can um, I've made lifelong friends. Uh, you know, FC, FCM has 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 changed the way I view politics for sure. Um, Scott Pierce, the current president of FCM, who is going to be stepping into the past presidency here in a few weeks, few months uh, in June, uh, as his term comes to an end, uh, often describes local governance as the government of proximity. And it's his line. And every yeah. time I say it, I feel like I need to give him a dollar because I use it so often on this show when I talk to municipal leaders. But it's a great line. Uh, 
you are a strong advocate because I've known you for almost two years now uh, of local yeah. governance. What do you see as the role of local governance in today's democracy being akin to? Uh, so, I mean, and Scott Scott says it, uh, Scott's a great president for one, and, and he's exactly right, the, the government of proximity. So, you know, I think our role is is to to help residents, you know, fill in the gaps and connect the dots on on what what roles belong to which level of government. Because I mean, that's that's a big part of my job is is fielding questions from uh, from residents and and just explaining to them that yeah, you know, you know, this isn't really a pen hold thing. We have no control, but we can do this. And uh, so I think as as municipal leaders, it's important that that we help our residents understand. You know what is federal jurisdiction? What is provincial? What is a, what is municipal? Um, and and they know us, right? Residents, especially in a small community, they know their councillors, they know their mayor a lot a lot better than they would know maybe their MLA or MP, um, because we're there every day. We we see each other at the grocery store, at the post office, you know. So it, it, we, as leaders, you know, we can help bridge, bridge that gap and fill in that knowledge. So starting on June 6th in Calgary, Alberta, our home province, where I'm broadcasting mm -hmm. while I'm recording this, and you are going to be just driving down Highway 2 good to come visit, yeah. um, will be the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Convention. At that convention, there will be an election for the entire board of directors and table officers. Uh, simple question, but I think it's the important one before we wrap up here is, why should, because we have listeners from across Canada who will be at that convention, why should people put their trust in you and vote for Mike Yargo as third vice president for the Federation of Canadian Municipalities this year? You know, I'm I'm passionate about the work. I'm passionate about Canada. I'm passionate about building better communities. Um, I, I've, I'm a good relationship builder. I, I've, I've shown that I'm prepared to do the work. I've shown that I'm, I'm, I'm here for the long haul. I'm committed to this organization. And I would be honored to serve as the third vice president for FCM. So we've taken 20 minutes of your time, but I can imagine there's people going, well, what about my issue? What about my challenge? Or what about, I want to speak to Mike for 10 minutes, or Mayor Yargo, I apologize, for 10 minutes and ask him some questions before I cast my vote. How can people get a hold of you? Is there an email address or is there a Facebook page that they can follow you? Just to make sure that they stay up to date on what's going on in your life and sort of ask yes, you some uh, questions that they might have. So my my email is mjarjo at townofpenhold.ca. I'm active on uh, most social media, although I will put a little caveat on that and say I'm, I'm probably less active than I used to be because um, I don't enjoy social media as much anymore. But I, I'm on there. I check it. Uh, send me uh, Mike Yarjo on Facebook, uh, Mike from Penhold on Twitter or X, uh, Mike from Penhold on Instagram. I'm on I'm on it all. Uh, happy to happy to take a, a DM or um, send me an email or uh, my phone number is on the the website as well. The, the uh, town of those, anyone who knows me knows that if you've come on the show and you're trying to run for an election, the links are in the show notes. So if you're listening to this, uh, scroll down and the links to the social media for Mayor Yargo's uh, social media feeds will be there, but also his email address as well. Uh, Mayor Yargo, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, looking forward to continuing this conversation. And hopefully when we're in Calgary, we'll be meet up and we can grab a coffee. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I appreciate everything you do for municipal, municipal municipalities. <laughs> Now, we will do our best to ensure that all candidates running for the table officer positions at this year's FCM conference in Calgary, if a contested election takes place, that is, has the opportunity to sit down with us to talk about their candidacy. So be sure to hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content, covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews, and our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.